Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on estimating with numbers. This is my second video on estimation. So if you didn't see the first one, if you don't know the definition of estimating, watch my first video before you watch this one. Because this time, we're going to be talking about math problems that have estimation in them. Uh, and the important ideas of getting close to the number that you're dealing with, but also making it easy on yourself okay so go ahead and ask it why do we even want to know this stuff estimation isn't easy uh, but there's some good reasons why you might want to know it a lot of times kids will hand in answers on uh, test questions to me where I go what was this kid thinking they're not even close all right if you have a good idea of estimation and you can look at a math problem and think of like close to what the answer is going to be it will let you know if what you're writing down for an answer makes any sense at all. Because a lot of times, kids can save themselves a lot of grief or at least a lot of wrong answers by using their their brain a little bit to say, whoa, whoa, whoa that answer doesn't make any kind of sense. Okay. Uh, secondly, if you don't need to get an exact answer to something, estimate. It's supposed to make it easier, right? The whole idea of estimating is that you can quickly get to something that's close to what the answer is. Well, if you don't need the exact answer, take the easy way out. Estimate, right? Finally, the third reason, it's all over tests. It's everywhere. They love putting it in word problems to try to trick you. Uh, you know, a lot of times they'll tell you to estimate on easy questions. You know, things where you can find the exact answer easily. And if you don't estimate, you get it wrong. You know, a lot of times kids try to show off. Like, I don't need to estimate. I can get the exact answer. Um, because they know how to get the exact answer much easier than they know how to estimate. But if the question says to do it, you got to do it. Okay, so so let's learn how. All right, we're going to learn how to estimate. If you watch my first video, you would know that when you're estimating, you're kind of taking good guesses. You're dealing with things you kind of have some prior knowledge of that you know about and then you know taking good guesses as to what you think is close to the answer okay so I'm just gonna write good guess underneath here uh, before we continue again if you didn't watch my first video yet uh, watch it okay you're taking a good guess all right so so let's look at some numbers we're not even dealing with difficult guesswork here why we have the numbers all right, we're going to estimate the answers to these numbers. 231. Well, let's get a number that's really close to 231 or pretty close to 231. That's really easy to add. Well, I can think of one right now. Turn these 3 and the 1 into zeros, right? 231 is closer to 200 than it is to 300. So that's what we're going to round it to. Let's round it to 200. That's pretty easy, right? Okay, well, how about 334? What's the number close to 334 that's really easy to add? Uh, we already did 200, right? We might as well stick with the hundreds theme. Round 334 to 300. I can do that in my head. What's the answer? 500. So the estimated answer to 231 plus 334, if my student gave me the answer of 500, I'd say, I'd say not bad. Okay? It's pretty close. The actual answer is 555, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you got close. Decent estimate, right? Okay, cool. Moving right along. Let's go on to some multiplication. Because I feel like multiplication has the most real-world application, right? Like when you're trying to figure out big groups of things, a lot of times you can estimate if you don't need an exact answer. And multiplying with estimates is way easier. So let's look. we got 6,568. Well, I'm going to round that off to the closest thousand. Why? Because I love getting rid of the numbers and turning them into zeros, right? Zeros are really easy to multiply with. So 6,568. Well, is that closer to 6,000 or to 7,000? 568 tells me it's closer to 7,000, right? Because I'm more than halfway to 7,000. So if I'm more than halfway, it makes more sense to go all the way up to 7,000. Okay? And let's multiply that by, let's see, 532. What's that close to? Well, we're going to get rid of these last two digits and make them zeros. 532, is it closer to 500 or 600? You said 500, you are correct, okay? So our estimated answer, or I, I should say the numbers we rounded to were 7,000 and 500, and you can easily find the answer to this problem if you know basic multiplication, which if you don't, you probably shouldn't really be estimating with numbers yet anyways, right? Learn your computations first. So seven times five, what's seven times five? 
35. Woohoo! But that's not the answer. Well, no. Now we got to plug in the zeros, okay? One, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. 3,500,000 3, is the estimated answer to 6,568 times 532. We can't be too far away, right? Our rounding is good, so our estimate is probably good as well. Okay, now for the hard part, word problems. <laughs> okay, word problems will get you because you got to figure out what computation you're using and then you have to estimate when it tells you to. So let me read this to you. Mr. C had 2,197 donuts in his classroom. It's true. I always have that many donuts in my classroom, just in case. Before lunch, he ate 600 or 968 of those donuts or of them. Use estimation to show about how many donuts he has left. Now look, I use this or I turn this word about yellow for, for a good reason. Because look, let's imagine that this isn't even there. Okay, it doesn't always tell you, oh, estimate use estimation sometimes you'll see this word about what does about mean about just means get close right about how many you know think about when you would have heard that around you you know when someone's like uh you know about how much time do we have left well we have close to this much time okay so the word about tells you to estimate or at least it tells you you can estimate okay so let's round these numbers off and make them easy I've got 2,197. I'm going to round that up to the thousands place. All right. It's way closer to 2,000 than it is to 3,000. So I'm going to round that number to 2,000. And then our other number over here, the amount of donuts I ate, 968. That's pretty close to 1,000, right? It's only like 32 away. Now, sometimes that's hard because you might go, man, there's three digits there. And when you round it up, there's four digits. You feel like that number's way bigger, but it's not always. This number's actually really close to a thousand. Okay, 968 plus 32 is a thousand. So if you rounded it down to 900, well, 900 is actually way further away from the original number than a thousand. So, you know, we're making good educated estimates here. Okay. And then finally, let's figure out our computation. So I had about 2,000, I ate about 1,000. Well, if I have something that I eat something, I'm not adding. Definitely not multiplying, okay? I am subtracting because I'm eating them. They're going away. So let's write my number sentence, my estimated number sentence, or my number sentence with my rounded numbers. We have 2,000 donuts I started with. I ate 1,000. 2,000 minus 1,000 is equal to 1,000. Okay, so I have about 1,000 donuts. I always write my label, even though my handwriting is terrible. I have a thousand donuts left, or even better, about 1,000 donuts left. Okay? Use estimation to get close to an answer, or really to solve a word problem. And I bet you're going to have to do that uh, before you're done with your career in education. Okay? So let's get rid of this and let's go ahead and talk about what we learned today. Well, we learned a few things. Estimation is supposed to make things easier. If it's not easier, you know, if you're not taking a problem and making it way easier or at least a lot easier, you're not estimating properly. If it's more difficult, you're definitely not doing it right. Okay? So make sure that you're making it easier. Secondly, you want to get close. All right. So when I took that number, 2,197, and I, and I rounded it, I didn't round it to 10,000. No, that's way far away. Okay. So you, you want to get close. But still, still make it easy. This has to be easy. Because if it's not, you're not using estimation the way it's supposed to be used. All right. And then finally, when a test question says to estimate, you got to do it. Even if you can do the real math, like if you can do lattice multiplication and do really hard multiplication problems, or if you can add and subtract with your eyes closed, you say, I'll find the exact answer. I don't care. Estimation, I don't need to do that. Even if. If you see it on a test and it tells you to estimate, do it, okay? Because they're not judging you on if you can do the computation. They're looking to see if you know what the word estimation means. So show them that you know it by actually doing it, okay? All right, so let's try it. 
I'm going to give you four problems. Three of them are just going to be basic computations that I want you to estimate. Number one, uh, 312 plus 429. Use rounding to get me a good estimate as to what that answer is going to be. Secondly, 394 times 267. Okay, Estimate what the answer to that is going to be. And then the third computational one, 4,866 minus 333. Estimate the answer to that one as well. So we've got an addition, a multiplication, and a subtraction. And finally, the one we're all terrified of. No! No! A word problem. Okay, this is a tough one. I made this one hard on purpose. So let's see if you can get it. Mr. C was making piles of snowballs to use in a sneak attack against his students. He has 57 piles of snowballs, and each pile has 99 snowballs in it. Use estimation to figure out about how many snowballs Mr. C has all together. Okay, I made that one tough. You gotta figure out what computation you're using and round your numbers to make your estimate. Okay, I hope that this helped. Hopefully you can try to use estimation to make some things easier for you or at least work with it enough where when you see it on a test, you know what it is and you know how to do it, okay? All right, good luck. I'll see you next time.